The Olympic Games, I was so pissed off after the t ceremony, I drove home in my uniform and I threw the goddamn medal out the window. <laughs> Time out. You, you still have the gold medal, right? No, I threw it away on the highway. We're very different people. On the road, somewhere on the highway, there's an Olympic gold medal. Yes, I just did like this and do it. Has it, it been found? Yeah, I do it big, big, big. I'm coming to win. I do it big, big, big. Say it again. I do it big, big, big. I'm coming to win. It is now time to welcome in a man that went from fourth round pick to nearly 40,000 oh, passing yards. He was just talking regular. Now you want to come with the voice? Do I do the voice every time? No, you don't do it every time, but go ahead. Yes, finish. I do. Okay, finish. Go ahead. The big podcast where we always do it. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Big. Big, yes. Thank you. From franchise tag to franchise bag. <laughs> from unseasoned salmon to the most seasoned city in america the most game-winning drives in a season the most fourth quarter comebacks in a season the new face of the atlanta falcons kirk freaking cousins in the house <laughs> that's that's as good as intro as i've ever had well done you, well done left i need you to do me a favor okay anything for Shaq? you know trey young yeah I make him go, ah, ah, for the Hawks. So I need you to go, ah, ah, for the Falcons. Ah, ah! Ah, ah! Ah, ah! <laughs> yeah, that, that was good. <laughs> that one was high-pitched and everything. Yeah, that was pretty good. I can work on that, though. <laughs> All right, I, I got a question. Yeah. They say you bought a gold grill with diamonds. Is that I true? I got a my dentist back in Michigan in my hometown. I, I gave him a shout out on national TV after a win because we were talking about the chains and everything. I said, yeah, I go back to my dentist in Michigan. Maybe he can fit me for a grill. Well, he took it seriously. So I come back from my off-season dental cleaning like I always do, and he's got some grills lined up. And he's like, here we go. Like, which, Let's get the fit right. He was serious. So it was gold, and then he said, now we got to take it to the to the jeweler to get the – but it, it's not going to be real diamond, Shaq. I'm not that. I'm pretty cheap. So it'll look the part. Are you going to wear it? If we win. What do you think? Should I? I'll tell you what. If, if you win, yeah. I'll wear one with you. <laughs> but mine's going to be real diamonds. Though. There you go. Yeah, mine's going to be real diamonds. Yeah, no. So, uh, I mean, the way teammates, teammates love it, you know, when I put on the chains and stuff. So if we win and we throw a grill in, I think that go over pretty well. So welcome back to the city of Atlanta. Thank you. I, I hear you have a lot of history with Atlanta. Can you explain your history? Yeah, yeah. So my wife is from here, grew up in on the north side of Atlanta. Um, her parents grew up on the north side of Atlanta. They went to Georgia. Her older brothers went to Georgia. She went to Georgia. We met at the end of our college years, and uh, uh, we spent six or seven off-seasons here. Um, every year when the season ended in Washington, D.C., or even in Minnesota, we would come down here just stay with my in-laws because it was kind of transient. You know, we didn't know where the next year was going to be. I was on one-year contracts. And living in Minnesota, it was colder in the winter, so we wanted to get down south. So we just stayed with our folks and kind of made my way around Atlanta a lot in the off-season. And um, we got married in Roswell. We had our first date at Stone Mountain. Oh, wow. Um, nice. So, yeah, we, my father-in-law is the biggest Atlanta sports fan there is. Uh, is he watches every the, Braves game. Is it truth to the rumor that you lived in their basement? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We still do. We're, that's where we're living right now because so we haven't bought a house like, yet. Me, he's the opposite <laughs> of you, bro. <laughs> Say that again. So we lived in my in-law's basement for the off-seasons going back several years. As an NFL We just player. moved here again, obviously, signing a week and a half ago. And it take you that long to find a house, bro? Until we, Yeah, I don't shop online like you. So I actually walk through the houses. Oh, you do? I actually walk through the houses unlike you. I've never, I've never ever walked through a house. You know so that, how right? many? I don't want to give the exact. How many homes would you say you have about? Now? Yeah. I have four now, and I've. And you've never toured any of them before buying? No, I haven't. Just you look online at the pictures. So when I was 
When I first got to Orlando, I bought a house. I saw it from the outside. I said, I'll take it. It's my first house. And then the house, and then the house with the blue roof. The guy was like, hey, man, we got this house. 25,000 square foot. It's marble everywhere. And he showed me a picture of the It was already built. You didn't build it. Yes, no, I didn't build it. It was already built. And a guy... A guy was losing it. He said, man, this house about to hit foreclosure market, 25,000 square feet. And they just showed me a picture of the bed. Matter of fact, the bed is right over yeah, there. Bed, it just, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I said, I'll, I'll take it. He's like, you don't want to look at it? It's like, no, I'll just take it. And then my house in L.A. Yeah, and, and then my house in L.A. was the same thing. We got this house in Beverly Hills. It's in a private community. It's in the cul-de-sac. Nobody can get in. They got police up front. I was like, I'll take it. So, yeah, I was I, so I, I'm in my in-laws' basement until we find a place. Which right now you're living in your in-laws' basement. That's what I'm saying, man. I just got up this morning and went to work. I don't mean to pocket and watch. And 180 million dollar contract living in his in-laws' basement for now. For now, we'll buy That's a nice a house, you know, a little closer to work. But, uh, but yeah, for when now. you hear the way that he buys houses, does that give you anxiety? Yeah, that's that's uh, that's the anti-Kirk. Right there. You have to understand, well, he's you guys are polar opposites. But he's an inspiration to me, too. Like, I've watched him talk business, and yeah. going, I love the line he said about why he went and got an MBA. He was sitting down with his investment people, and people were talking to the investment people, not to him. And he's like, no, 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 like, right here, I got an MBA. And that that gave me blood flow. Like, I was like, okay. Like, I, that's why I may go, when I'm done playing, I may try to go to law school or get an MBA, because I kind of think similarly. So we're Hold on, opposites, please. and we have some similarities. Yeah, I see that. I made that story up. Oh, no. no just you fool me. <laughs> <laughs> you fool me. Kirk, I know you have a bunch of questions for Shaq, so why don't we make this our Zip Recruiter, sponsored by Zip Recruiter, business section of the pod. Man, I don't even know where to begin. So my brother-in-law works for Papa John's. Okay. He's actually here today, uh, standing watching. So he's a big fan of yours, appreciates you. Uh, does he still work for Papa John's? He still does. All right. Yeah, he works in compensation. For now. <laughs> 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 so, uh, uh Obviously, you're, I think, on their board. Yes. And then you do some endorsement stuff with them and all yes. that. Um, and then Krispy Kreme. You own a bunch of Krispy Kremes. Um, did, have you franchised both? Or have you only franchised the Krispy Kremes? No, I franch- I've, I've franchised with Papa John's also and, and Krispy Kremes. I, uh, when I first came in, my father used to hit me with a lot of horror stories. So I don't know what it is for NFL, but I know for NBA, about 73%. Of all athletes, when they're done, zero to five years, have nothing. So my father always used to hit me with that. And he used to say stuff like, you need to learn business. Never knew what that was. Then I go to L.A. and I meet Magic Johnson for the first time. He said, it's okay to be famous, but at some point you want to be a businessman. Which he was. Which he was. Very much Never never knew what that meant. So now I go back to school. I buy a book, The Dummy's Guide to Starting Your Own Business. And the chapter that I really love was Joint Ventureship. Okay. Because, you know, people always talk about creating images and, and you know as a great athlete, only thing we have to do is perform. When we perform and we win, opportunities open up. Yep. So how can I be Shaq and run a sports store? There's no way I could do it by myself. So that's why joint venture was very, very important. So right. <clears throat> I'm the master of joint <gasps> ventures. I want to own a donut shop, but I don't have time to run a donut totally, shop. So totally. Krispy Kreme is already totally. there. You do a joint venture with them. So... I've always tried to be the the master of that. I've always tried taken things that are difficult and break it down to its simplest form. That's I want to own a gym. I want to run a gym, but I can't do that and play and perform. So what do I do? 24-hour fitness. Do a JV with them. So that's how I've always, you know, done my business. Did sports team ownership interest you at all as you were playing? Yes, I actually had a conversation with the Falcons and I yep. thought about it, but I know there's I know there's a couple of new NBA teams coming up, so I'm probably that would interest you more. Yes, interest you more. If yes. you were to do it, would you want to be involved in basketball decisions? No, <laughs> because I have triple HD, ADD, DDD, disorder, disorder, disorder. Yeah, and only certain things make me concentrate. Like I know all the hookah flavors. Like that, Otherwise, yeah, that I, locks I you in. Yeah, that locks me in. But like, like doing all certain things, I'm just not. I like I, <clears throat> I'm more of a, I'm more of a title guy. Like I have a PhD, but it was all about the title for me, for my children, for children that look up Big to me. Big Shaq, this. Yeah. So in order to, like, I would like to own a team, but I don't want to be making decisions. I just want to be. I just want to be like sitting in the box with my arms crossed, going in a suit, or would you sit there like Mark Cuban? Oh, suit. I'm wearing a suit. Suited and booted. 
nice seat. I feel like though you would get involved in like marketing stuff. Oh yeah, marketing and, stuff. Yeah. And like giveaways and like oh. like let's get a better DJ experience. I feel like in you the would arena. boost season tickets immediately. I would try with your with your presence. Winning four championships doesn't happen unless you have great teammates who are willing to bring their game every day. The same applies if you're running a business. To be successful, you need the right people on your team willing to star in their roles. That's why I count on ZipRecruiter to help me there. It's a game changer. ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology finds people with all the right skills and experiences for all your roles, so you can get qualified candidates fast. In fact, Four out of five employers who post for ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash big. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash big. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. I just want to know, when you were a kid, did you did you watch Shaq? Was he oh, one of your yeah. favorite players? Yeah, so. I, I hate when you do that. <laughs> do you I know was, why? I was just a kid. I was old. just tall. I'm not saying that you're old. I need you to understand that as the host of the show, I know that people are so excited to meet you. But I'm not they old. They all love to be like, man, that one time on the match, but you don't like that? I'll no. stop. Yeah, I'm okay, yeah, because I'm not old. That, that makes you feel old? Yeah, because I'm looking at a beautiful grown man you're talking about when you was a kid. You made me feel like I'm 75 years old. How should I ask it? Have you ever seen Shaq play? You ever seen Shaq play? When I was this tall, <laughs> no, the magic years, uh, I love the 30 for 30 on this magic moment. So yeah, I'm yeah. from West Michigan. So the hero for our area is Rich DeVos. Oh, okay. Mm, because I'm, that's where I grew up. Got it. Grand so Rapid. the magic are big there because they own the team, have yeah. owned the team forever. And so um, it was, you know, I've, I've lived it now, obviously as an athlete, getting franchise tag, changing teams, the business side of it and how it's, it goes beyond just, you know, I, 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 get the, I got the vibe from watching the documentary and watching your story, like, you loved Orlando. You loved living there. You liked the city. But L.A. provided better opportunities. Just kind of hearing his story in that documentary of how he left, chose to leave to go to L.A., but at the same time didn't feel like he really got the offer he wanted to stay. And that just kind of resonated with me because I feel like not at the altitude that Shaq was doing it, but I feel like I've kind of lived that a little bit where you're kind of, I'll stay if the offer is such that it makes sense to stay. But if it doesn't, I believe that if I go to the market, there will be unique opportunities. And obviously, L.A. worked out for him, not just on the court. Mm. I mean, the opportunities off the court. And uh, again, different altitude. Yeah. But just watching that, it's funny because as a kid, you watch Shaq, going back to how I was so young when he was playing. <laughs> as a kid, you watch Shaq, and then you watch documentaries adult, and you're like, wow, like now I've kind of lived that in a different altitude, but lived it. And it's just fun to kind of see it. The, uh, the indecisiveness, so I, you're, there's no way you know. What happened with him in Washington was crazy. So he came up fourth-round pick. They had another quarterback. He ends up being the guy. And for like three straight years, they're like, I don't know. Let's franchise tag him. I don't know. That, franchise tag him. That was my question. Okay. What does that mean, franchise tag? So it, it, preve it, it allows a team, any, every team in the NFL can franchise tag one player a year, which is to prevent a long-term contract from having to be signed but you get paid well for that one year. So it would have been very strategic for the Magic to have that. They would have said to you, you can do it three times to a guy before he would truly be a free agent. The Magic would have said, here's a one-year deal at a number you would have liked, but it would not have been beyond one year. And then they would have done it again. And then eventually you would have been able to. And so go to the Washington market. kept doing it to the point where they couldn't do it anymore. And then you were a free agent. And I'm so happy for you now because it's turned into like it set the market for you and then you got to experience free agency. Yeah. But I have to imagine those years in a in a game like football where you just want, can I get some long-term security <laughs> right now? Because yeah. one hit, who the hell yeah. knows? Yeah. To be on the other side of it right now has to feel incredible. Well, we love D.C. and we love Minnesota and so it is tough to leave teams but at the same time um, you understand that you know, at some point, it, maybe that's what's in the cards. You got to, you know, 100%. you got to do that. So, so you got traded, correct? Did, I didn't get traded. It became a free yeah. agent. Got it. Contract expired. Okay, because I was going to ask before you got traded, did they tell you? Because I got traded twice in the middle of the night. <laughs> they didn't tell you? No, they didn't tell me. <laughs> I felt like you knew the Lakers one, though. No, I didn't know. Or the Heat one with no, that rally. The trade know. already happens, then they No, tell yes, no, well, the, the trade is in talk, and then they call me and tell me to trade. But the funny thing about the Miami thing is when I got traded in Miami, I said, okay, 
just I need to go to the locker room and get my stuff because me and Pat had a little altercation. And as soon as I hit that corner, it was about five police cars waiting for me. <laughs> so I just I was like, Shaq, we can't let you in. I was like, I'm going to just go in. I'm going to just go in and whoop his ass right quick and then just go get my stuff. It's like, nope, we can't let you in. So, All right, this one is the general, Shaq, before you ask that. Uh, breakout players. General, they always help us. They're one of our favorites. Do you have any teammates, former teammates, that you would like to see have a breakout year? Guys that you just love that you're like, man, I really hope they tear it up this year. Pretty much all of them, but uh, K.J. Osborne is a receiver who was with us in Minnesota who was kind of in the shadow of Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen, and I always felt like K.J. was better than the opportunities he got. Mm. And so he went to free agency and, and went to New England, and I'd love to see him have a huge year in New England kind of with a bigger role than what he had in Minnesota to show what he could do and – but that list would go on and on of guys who I feel like because they got somebody in front of them, they don't get to, to be as good as or show as good as they really are. Mm. You know, you want those guys to get opportunities. Do you, you ever have a teammate like that that didn't have the opportunity but you knew they were nice? No, because it's you all. You probably went to the head coach and were like, play no, this guy. No, this is all about me. <laughs> what do you want the Falcons fans to know about their new quarterback? Well, most of my story they would – likely no, but I, they need to know that I'm going to be committed to doing everything I can to help us win a world championship. That every day I get up, like I drove to Flowery Branch today, you know, and doing rehab and um, it's, it's a 365 really, like what, what do we have to do to win a world championship? Um, and I, I want this to be my final stop. You know, I don't want to do the deal. No offense, but I don't want to go play for the Suns and the Celtics at the end. I want to finish with the heat, if you will, and be done, you know? So Same uh, thing I said. Yeah. So that's that's really my plan is that I wouldn't play for another team. I'd finish with the Falcons. My boys are my boys are six and five. They won't remember that I played in Washington. They will barely remember that I played in Minnesota. They're gonna remember I played for the Falcons. And I want those to be good memories. So I feel like, you know, this is this is the stretch. I want to finish strong. People remember how you finish more than how you started. Mm. So the start was good, but I want to finish really strong here in Atlanta and have my boys say, yeah, he may have played for Washington or Minnesota, but we remember him as a Falcon, and mm. I want fans to say the same thing. This episode of The Big Podcast with Shaq is brought to you by The General. You know Shaq loves The General. Before the league, before the rings, before I got my big break, I've been rocking with The General. The General has been offering quality coverage for 60 years, and you already know The General is there for Shaq when I needed them. Low rates and flexible payment options to keep you covered. If you're ready for your big break, you know what to do. Visit thegeneral.com and get a quote today. Again, visit thegeneral.com and get a quote today. And it wouldn't be the big podcast without the general. What advice would you give Kirk? He's already gone into a new locker room, but walking into the new locker room, how do you set the tone? You show him who you are. And I know he's going to do that by his play. Obviously, I, I know who he is, and, you know, they're going to be looking at him. This is a city that's almost been there, and hopefully he's a guy that could bring him to the next level. But he knows what to do. He he knows how to do it. Like, when when I walked in the new locker room, I didn't have to say anything. They they already knew. Like, you know, even when I got to Orlando, Scott Scouts was, like, carrying my bag, and I was like. <laughs> you were the alpha? I, I know you're not talking to me. I said one. That yeah. was how Trent Williams yeah. was. Yeah. Like really you're supposed to give rookies a hard time, like he's saying, carry my bags. And the old line used to say, like, every rookie gets indoctrinated except for Trent Williams. He was yeah. like untouchable. <laughs> and I am guessing Shaq was the same way. Yeah, because I looked at Scott, I was like Jackson Alpha. I said, Scott, <laughs> two things that ain't gonna happen today. One, you ain't gonna whip my <laughs> and two, I'm not lifting those bags. So we we're gonna I'm get guessing this. he never carried a bag. Yeah, yeah. So I said, we're gonna yeah. get this straight now. Yeah, you don't mess with Shaq. It's my you got to know in the locker room who the yeah. alphas are. And I knew it was Trent, and I'm guessing it was Shaq. And That's funny. It is what it is. So in football, you, like being a new leader of the team, you guys have different divisions. Like when I came in, I didn't even talk to the guards. <laughs> Seriously, it was just like all forwards, because I, I can't relate to the guards. So it was all forwards and the bigs, you do what I say or else. You have that same attitude? Uh, you know, we're talking about we're opposites. Our leadership style is probably a little different. <laughs> no, I try to relate to everybody, but uh, – uh, you know, I think I think there are different different ways to do it, and I think for me it's big right now. Like you switch teams, I, I don't like it. 
Like, I don't like leaving what's familiar. I don't like having these friendships and relationships going back years with coaches and players and then having to say, hi, I'm Kirk Cousins and brand new and trainers and supports. Everybody's brand new. And it's, I got no shared history with these people. That's hard. And so I'm trying to kind of make up for lost time there. But uh, uh, I don't know if when you switch teams, that was difficult at all or you just kind of like whatever. I tried to go to the teams where I was familiar with the city. Yeah. So being in Orlando, I was going to L.A. shooting movies. and yeah. So I was already familiar with the city. I already had a house there on the beach. Yeah. So, And then when I got traded to Miami, <clears throat> that was different, but I, I was just Still happy. a nice place to yeah, live. Yeah, very nice place to live. Who's and you on, won. Yeah, and we won. Who's on your Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks? I get asked that. Kevin Hart asked me that at the Super Bowl. Um, Who? Kevin Hart. Who is that? <laughs> He's a uh, up-and-coming comedian. Oh, the uh, – yeah, I was going to say. You yeah, had a small guy. <laughs> no disrespect to Kevin. But. Can you say midget anymore? Uh, little person is what we go with now. Seriously? So you want to say Kevin Hart's a little person. Okay, cool. Yeah. And who made that law? The the society. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad we ironed that <laughs> society out. Society, capital S. Got it. So anyway, what were you asking? Oh, his Mount Rushmore yes. of quarterbacks. I mean, I'd like to hear yours, but uh, – Tom Brady's obviously got to be on there. I think Joe Montana belongs on there. Mm. I think Peyton Manning with five MVPs probably belongs on there. It doesn't leave much room for any many other spots, but you got names like Bart Starr and Johnny Unitas and guys, you, you know, it's hard to leave off. So I kind of leave that last one open because I don't think – I don't want to offend anybody knowing that I left them off. Patrick Mahomes. Well, that's the other thing is Pat is – Holy – Well on his way. He already is – like statistically, he's already a Hall of Famer. Ahead of ahead of Roger Starbuck? There's another well, one. I'm not comparing. Okay, yeah. They made the top 100 players of all time. 100 years of the league was 2019, so they made the top 100 players to ever play. And the list of quarterbacks, um, Staubach made it. Uh, Peyton was on there. John Elway was on there. Montana My boy on Fran there. on there? Fran, Fran Tarkenton? Uh, I don't think Fran I don't think made he it. made it. Fran's an Atlanta guy. I love Fran. Love Fran. That was your guy? I what called jerseys, Fran on my way down What football jerseys did you have as a kid? Me and Joe Green. And refrigerator Perry, <laughs> big guys, big guys. Did you have uh, basketball and, players in and, the jerseys? And, uh, yeah. and two tall Jones. I actually had his '96 Dream Team jersey. Damn! Wow. Yeah, we were in Coles. We got that one in Coles. 1990 summer of '96, the Atlanta Olympics. Did you enjoy the Olympics playing here? Yes and no. Lenny Wilkins only played me. He only played me ten minutes. You were like in your. Third or fourth year in the league? Doesn't matter. I, I was still at Shaq. <laughs> Bro, this is a true in story. His third or fourth year in the league, he was named a top yeah. 50 greatest yeah. players of all time. That's true. The Olympic Games, 96. I played throughout, helped him come back, win games. In the gold medal game, Lenny Wilkins says, hey, this is probably Dave Robinson's last game, so he's going to get more minutes. I say, cool. I wasn't playing. But he didn't play me at all till like the last two minutes. Damn, you got put in. Oh, yes, the last so two I minutes. got put in the last two minutes. I was so pissed off after the t ceremony, I drove home in my uniform and I threw the goddamn medal out the window. <laughs> oh, you just seventy five. You don't. You, yeah. you still have the gold medal, right? No, I threw it away on the highway. I really We're very did. different people. No, I was so mad. That gold medal would be. No, I threw it away. Very in a very safe it was place me, in my house. Kenny and Uncle Jerome. We was in the car. I didn't even. I, we went We're to the hotel. Different. I'd go to him, go tell, get my shit. <laughs> I still had my uniform on, and we. Driving, and by the time I hit, you still have the uniform at least. It's somewhere around there. So you're driving from where to where? Atlanta to Orlando, and on the road, somewhere on the highway, like there's an Olympic gold medal. Yes, I just did like this and do it. Has it been found? No, probably not. I don't love that for you. I was do you so regret mad. that? No, I don't. You're decisive. Because you one, because one, I should have made Dream Team one. Ninety-two. I was yeah. About that. Christian Leitner, man. So I made the dream team too, but that was the world. You're games. saying you ought to have made the ninety-two team. Yes. Which but, is probably, as history would suggest, probably should be the case. But we didn't make the ninety-two team. They wanted to appease me and put me on the ninety-four team, the World Games, and we won that. Then they put me on the dream team three. But I was so pissed that Lenny Wilkins did that to me. Today's episode is brought to you by Morgan and Morgan. As the NBA's most dominant big men of all time. I'm living proof that size matters. And the same should go for your law firm. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm with over 100 offices nationwide and more than 1,000 lawyers. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. 
For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash the big or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. Again, that's ForThePeople.com slash big or pound law 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. How many Olympics did you play in? Was I, think that that was, I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. You so didn't get a three. chance to, to get another Olympic no. gold in Athens? No. I was How so easy were the Olympics? Like, was it, it hard to win a gold medal or was it a joke? It was a joke. It was easy. But now it's not so easy. Yeah, it's different. Like, I, not, I know now you got LeBron and those guys coming back. It ain't going to be easy like it used to be. And that's scary. I remember when we were here and Europe was here, but now yeah, it's... Close the gap. The gap is really, really close. 96 dream team versus whatever team gets made this year. Oh, we'll kill him. Was Duncan on the 96 team? I don't think he was. No, he was. He didn't graduate till 96. Dream team, dream team two could have been dream team one. 96. So the 96 no, 94, dream team. 94 is dream team two. Me, GP, Alonzo, Isaiah. You would have beaten Jordan. Yes. That's a hot take. Yes. That's scalding hot. Easily. Because of Leitner being on the 92 team alone? Yes. He didn't really play, though. Doesn't matter. He was on the team. So you're really saying like you would have dominated the game? Oh yes, easily. Okay. See, the thing with hosting a podcast with you is that those are really hard takes to disagree with. The self confidence is there. Yeah. I have a question because yeah. I'm I'm a football fan, but not really. Yeah. He's a you, Cowboys. Fan. You hear about sure. you hear about guys not participating in the. Is that good or bad? Participating what you, in what? Yeah. The uh, yeah. Combines. Oh yeah, I think I think the games just evolve where players are realizing. Wait a minute, I'd probably get drafted high whether I do this or not. Um, I think they're recognizing there's a little more leverage than they realized, and teams need a number one receiver and they need a number one tight end and they need a great back and quarterback and line play and defensive players more than than you know. I think more than they re- players realized, and so they're now saying, wait a minute team needs me a lot more than maybe it, it used to look like so i'm gonna play play it like i play from a position of power so it would seem that's what they're doing that's what it feels like so that's not a bad thing as long as they keep getting drafted high <laughs> i if i'm looking at it from like the media having covered it it really was like hey wear this underwear we're gonna jump we're gonna have you run we're gonna track everything and then for a few months that one time that you ran, we're going to hold it against you. We're going to talk about how that one time you ran, you ran really slow. You yeah, shouldn't get drafted. That's what really it high. is. And so to them, they're going, judge me based off my film. Judge me based off my interviews. Like, I'm going to do one broad jump that's not going to appease you, and then you're going to call me not athletic. So I, from your perspective, like the leverage play, it, it makes sense. And So is that good or bad for Caleb Williams? I think the top quarterbacks have never really performed. They have not really done all For years, they've opted out of throwing at the combine, and then they throw back at their school on their pro day to their receivers. You threw at the combine? I did. I I didn't have the the cloud or the altitude to be able to, you know, dictate the terms. But I remember being at the the Senior Bowl. draft as RG3 and Andrew Luck. Got it. I remember being at the Senior Bowl and having scouts of teams interview me, and at some of them, a lot of them were great, but some of them, they're, they're talking down to you. And they're saying they're, they're losing you. They're kind of talking down to you. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Like, you guys haven't had a quarterback for like 30 years. And like, I could maybe be an improvement. Right. You're kind of talking to me like I'm lucky to be here. I feel like the power dynamic is actually the opposite. But yeah. so it was just interesting because you even like realized at the time, you're like, okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you're kind of letting him, but you're realizing like, I feel like you need a quarterback a lot more than. You know, I'm realizing with you now, like listening to you, I feel like you're the ultimate team player. I feel like everyone on your team always likes you. You're really good at making sure everyone's involved. But you also have such a firm grasp of like, hey, I'm, don't take advantage of me. <laughs> like, I know what I'm worth. I like, think, I feel like I you think, really understand yeah. both. I said to multiple times, I've just said, whether it's to my agent or to a coach, when we're going through the contract process, I just say, look, I deal in two things reality and risk and i'm ha- if 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 i get cut and that's reality then that's reality but if reality as i was saying you know thinking about the scout like if reality is you need a quarterback you guys haven't had one in many years 
there's a chance I could be that. If that's reality, then let's mm. deal in reality. Let's not deal in a fake world where you're acting like you have all the cards. Yeah. Or risk where, you know, hey, I may be the quarterback, but I don't want to take the risk of then I got to deal with that too. But as long as I'm willing to take a risk and there's reality that is favorable, then I'm going to deal in those two things. Mm. And did you tell your agent the number you wanted or did you rely? No, on the no. Uh, I've always been about structure because yeah. in basketball, I think the contracts are guaranteed. Yeah. Yes. I'm guessing. Football is not the case. Wait, it's not guaranteed? No. So it's all fake money. So, Seriously? Yeah. So I never knew that. you get portions of it guaranteed. There have been, oh, there's been is one the all guaranteed contract. Who was that? Deshaun Watson when he went from Houston right. to Cleveland. But so, other than that, it's percentages. So it means if you get hurt, they can go, uh. Correct. So you basically sign one yeah. to two year deals. I never knew They're that. a nice, nice contract, but then there's these fake numbers afterwards that basically are if yeah, you so play Shaq, amazing. If you see like a four year, $75 million deal, but it's only like 30 something guaranteed. It's really a two year deal where the guaranteed money is. And then after those two years, they're likely going to cut you. Or ask you to restructure your contract. So, Shaq, what it does is it makes everybody come into work and grind their tails off because even the highest paid guys are like, if I don't deliver, I'm gone. Right. So there's a little bit of a, there's like a healthiness to that where no one's on easy street, no one can coast. But at the same time, you know, it's not player friendly in the sense that, you know, guys are basically fighting year to year no matter how high of an altitude you've gotten to. That mental toll has to be exhausting. Yeah, but it, I think it creates a great product. I think it's partly among many reasons why the NFL is so popular is because guys are giving it everything they have. Yeah. And I think they should do that in the NBA. Some of these bums making guaranteed money. Take away the guaranteed money? Yeah. I don't think the Players Association will ever give that up. They should. That's, that's it. Like, the other I one, the NBA, PA, I don't know if you can speak to this, but the NBA stuff that we're, we wish was true of ours mm. is that if you play 10 years in the NBA, lifetime medical. For us, it's basically no matter how long you play, you'll get medical insurance for like five years after you're done playing, then it's over. Mm. And so obviously a guy like me who's going into year 13, I would love for the NBA dynamic where I know I've played long enough that when I retire, insurance is taken care of for the rest of my life. Yeah, when it starts hitting That's you what the NBA's 20, got. 30 years from yeah. down the line. <clears throat> you know, the NBA... Oh, we get free medical? <laughs> if you played over 10. Have you been paying this whole time? Yeah, so why the am I still... Uh, you sure about that? I, you can fact check me. Because you're the podcast, general. will fact check Man, me. Like, every time I go to CBS, ask me to pay. <laughs> some. Oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> and who was your favorite NFL team coming up? Well, I grew up in Chicago originally, so Bears? I was a Bears fan. And, but it was tough because the Bears, you know, the quarterback play for the Bears growing up was never that Other, dynamic. Yeah. <sighs> so it was a Other little tough. Jack, man. Can you guess my favorite team and why? Cowboys? Because they're America's team? No. <laughs> Because I used to tell people Ed Tuto Jones is my father. Because I, I, I started off playing football. Mm -hmm. Football was my sport. I, I wanted to make the NFL. And it I would day. think you could have been a left tackle. That See, would have been an option. I, I hate when y'all do that. No, I'm tied like in, man. Uh, the same thing. You know, I don't think, I really I'm don't. I'm not blocking for you. <laughs> I'm trying to think here. Kurt. First of I'm, all, the left tackle will get paid better nope. than the tight end, just FYI. Well, what's the coach of the Falcons name? The coach of the Falcons, Raheem Morris. Raheem Morris. Okay. I'm the guy, Kurt, that's got to come to you and be like, man, that play, I'm open. <laughs> he just called. We, we need this touchdown. I'm, I'm going to go here and, and fake and out left, out. just throw it up, and I'm going to go grab it. That, that, that I, left tackle, no, of him man. in the early days in Orlando, I think he would be twitchy enough to do that. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, the Laker days. Yeah, Laker days, no. I'm a little nervous zone? the twitch wouldn't yeah, be there. No, Lob no. up in the red zone? Yeah, no. Yeah, but you can't. How do we get to the red zone? We got to get to the red zone first. Plus, the difference he could make at left tackle. You know why I stopped playing football? Mm -mm. Well, basketball was a better choice. No, so one day one basketball player with the salary. Yeah, one day I was I was in trouble. I was in punishment, and I was in a room. And my father came and hit me in the back of the head with the paper. He's like, "If you stop messing around, you can do this." And I'm looking at it. it says John Conkac signed 15 for three. I never even knew who he was. And then at the bottom of the paper was two tickets. So we went to the game, sitting way up. And I'm watching this guy, and I'm like, he's good, but I'm doing, I'm, I'm better now at 16 this guy. And I really started focusing on basketball. I really did for that reason. Because I used to like so you football, football for a while. Yes. Long time. Because I like to touch people up. 
Also played Is nose it? guard, yeah. Also plays okay. nose guard, yeah. Like I had a thing like as soon as the center hiked it, I put I put that four on it. Move. And then I'm and, and then I'm coming to get you, high Kurt. Center yes. that oh. breaks the huddle and looks yeah. at him over the <laughs> just ball like, like, oh. like how quickly can this game be over? Uh have you ever laid a hit on somebody? What was the best hit you've ever laid on somebody in your life? It's usually obviously after an interception. So it's um, frustration based. Yeah, I've made a few tackles in my career. I've also gotten blown up. I threw a pick six against the Panthers last year and a guy was returning it down the sideline and I'm trying to go cut him off for the angle and he's got a, a lead blocker. He's got a convoy. And I'm like, I just got to try to force him to cut back in. So I take him on higher than I should have and he just, the convoy just boom. And I just, you know, oh, completely, man. completely sprawled out. He ended up scoring. But uh, yeah, usually I'm not delivering any blows. I just no, go low, no tackle high school the angles. hit. No. Uh, maybe, maybe here or there, but no, it's a yeah. small time. Achilles, right? Tore my Achilles, How yeah. How you feeling? How's it going? I'm like five months, came back. Uh, Did you, know, you feel it when you tore it? Uh, I felt like someone stomped on my heel. That's how I felt yeah. in Boston. You did it? Yeah, I did I it. I didn't know you did it. Yeah, my last game. Left or right? My right. And then how did you do the rehab? Did you I do it with the team? I didn't. I wanted to come back. So I needed to average 10 points to pass up Will Chamberlain, but... I didn't feel right. I was I was only averaging nine, ten points one play. What I was bothering you physically? Nothing. Oh, you felt good. Yeah, I felt good, but Did I just you do much body work through the years. No, were never. You diligent. Never. See, we're just built different. We're just yeah. I never worked out. You're just a kind of a freak. Like yes, to, to be that big and carry that much weight and not have like joint issues late in the career is crazy. But I'm I'm memorized for 27, 28. So when I was averaging eight or nine, I felt like I was robbing the fans. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just do something else. What per right. where, I want to ask about the Achilles. What percentage would you say you're at right now? It's hard to say a percentage. I the big thing is I can take drops. The minute I would be like in the pocket and someone would come at me and I would have to move and yeah. run, then you'd see that okay, he's still coming back. So like seven on seven, I'm good. But to be in a live drill and running bootlegs, that's where I wouldn't be able to do it yet. So I'm hoping June I can get there. Mm. But obviously we got some runway now before. September. So. It's great that you've been this in tune with your body, though, because if this was, I feel like you're checking in all the time. Yeah. Now it's okay. Let's just get this back up to speed instead of how do I come back from an injury? To yeah. No, this is my first surgery in my life, so this has been kind of a new experience for me. Um, I've stayed healthy up until this point, so just got to get this back. But it also helps, as my agent said when I first did it. He's like, "Look, you're a pocket passer. It's different. You know, if you were a corner." I've seen the wheels, though. <laughs> I've also bet a Kirk Cousins t rushing touchdown before, and it hit. <laughs> oh, and it hit? Oh, it did. Oh, the one where oh, you, like, oh, oh. dove in the end zone, I did not talk to him okay, before. Right, Arizona. I wasn't like, okay. yes. Arizona. All right. Wow. I wasn't <laughs> like, Kirk, I need a rushing touchdown. Good. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah, so. Scenario question. You got Jerry Rice, Deion Sanders guarding him. You got me on the left side with a bum oh, guarding me. With a bum. We need a touchdown. Who you throwing it to? Well, Two Are we in the red zone? Left. Yeah, red zone. Yeah, we yeah, need I'm, a touchdown to win this Super Bowl. We're on the 20. I give him yeah. a chance. I want to see what he can do, just out of curiosity. His hands are impeccable. Hands are impeccable? Impeccable. I mean, it's, it's going to come down to just that entry you, pass, basically, is what I'm going to try to do. Wherever you throw it, I'm going to yeah. Odell Beckham Jr., that yeah. thing, just bring it down. I'm going to look at you and be like. Love that. I love that. And then I would get off the silence. i say, hey, this guy needs to be a left tackle. <laughs> yeah. I just got hit a bunch. He needs to be a left tackle. Hey, what would, would you be a chest better. bump? Would you jump into people? What would be your... You can do a know. tackle just, screen where you get the ball. Form. I'm not a left tackle, sir. I need to be a vital part of the offense. Calais Campbell no. is 6'8". Yep. No, I'm Defensive not Calais tackle. Campbell. I'm, yeah. No, no. I'm 7'1". With, with, with feet work, okay. movement. I would say, though, because when Shaq would score with his left hand, and I wish more current players would do this, he would just look at it and yell, it's alive. It's alive. And so I feel like if he caught one, one-handed, oh. you would just be sitting there, like, looking at I you. Wish, I wish I had my old VHS football tapes. They, don't, they have to exist somewhere. They're, they're somewhere in one of my safes. Okay. With yeah. the gold medal. Did he? No, oh, I did. Thing. Uh, I promise you. Where the gold medal should be. And I never told that story before, but Lenny Wilkins had me pissed. Winningest and losingest coach in the history care. of the NBA. I don't care. You don't. You don't play the Shack for two minutes in Atlanta during the Olympics. I don't give. He just called part. himself the Shack. Yeah. I don't know if you guys picked exactly. up on that. Yeah, you, you don't do that to me. Uh, I want. I one last annoying question. It's actually, I think, kind of funny. The um, 
the Kyle Pitts thing that came out. Yeah. So, so Kyle Pitts wears number eight. Kirk has always worn number eight. And then in NFL, I don't know if it's like this in the NBA. Oh, you want that jersey number? You're famously going to have to pay for that or something like that. And Kyle told Kirk, the only thing you need to do is give me more targets. <laughs> and then Kirk chose 18. And so the, the, <laughs> the meme online is, damn, Kirk really is not going to throw this ball to Kyle Pitts. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so he wanted to switch numbers anyways. So it was oh. like a perfect fit. He's like, I want to switch numbers. You want number eight. This is perfect. I was like, great. And then the league spoke into it. They're like, well, Kyle Pitts has a lot of jerseys that are number eight with Pitts on the back. Right. You would have to buy every single one. To you or, or to Kyle. Both of us would have to just write the check. And I was like, well, what is it? It was a big number. And How I was big? like, yeah, come I, don't, I don't want to write that check. I'm How good. I'm ha- it, was, it was several hundred thousand. Oh, yeah, no, we're not writing that check. So I was like, I, I'm good with 18. And Kyle's like, I'm good with eight. <laughs> so yeah. we're going with eight and 18 because after like, I'm hear, good. After hearing the way you shop for houses, you were, there's no way. Yeah. You're like, that's a Would a young payment. Shaq have bought the number? So when I first got to Orlando, Terry Kelly's like, you're going to have to pay me. But I'm not paying you. I'm cool. <laughs> it's, he's consistent. Like which no number? Least. 33. Because I wanted 33. Oh. Yeah, but he was – like, You said – you said – um Everybody has a price. I'm out. I'll play. I'll wear 32. No, because he was, uh, you know, arrogant about it. He said, "Oh yeah, you you can have it, but you're gonna have to buy it." Young fella making all the money. Looking back, knowing that the money was not the issue, no. would you have bought it? No, I wouldn't have bought it. All right, see, you're good with 32. No, no, yeah, 32 was cool. Then you were 34 in LA. And then he was traded during the middle of the season. <laughs> this guy's a savage. Was that savage? You? The statute of limitations up now. Yeah, I did that, Terry Catlins. That was all me. <laughs> <laughs> How does the meeting? You walk into the owner's office? Yes, yeah, so like, I, 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 I need him about Because, like, these guys used to always say, it's your team, it's your team. I didn't know what that meant. It's your team. It's your team. I was like, yeah, he needed to be about it, and they trade him. And at that point where you're like, wow, I have a lot yeah, of power. I do. It works. But the contract we couldn't get done. That's the part that bugs me is that we couldn't keep you in Orlando for the whole run. I know. That bothers me. I know. Being a guy, you know, from West Michigan, the family that owned the team was from there. Also, from the no. perspective of, do you know how much money the franchise would have made if he was on the team? How much for, they would have won? That's what I'm saying. Like, money comes with winning. The franchise will be okay. But it takes, a, as Shaq knows, it takes a commitment. It takes saying we're doubling down on this. We're selling the farm a little bit to do this. But you know, what really pissed me off about right that decision. about that contract. So, what did I make in in, in LA? One twenty. Okay. Really made 60. Because of taxes? Yeah. Yeah, to go from Florida to California is wild. So, like, everybody's bragging about the, the what's the guy, the Oshie, the guys? Uh, Shohei Otani. 700 million is really 300 million. What do you think million. his name was? I thought it was, I thought it was Otoshi. Otoshi. <laughs> yeah. I'll call him that from now on. No, no, what's his name? Shohei Otani. Yeah, see, I know it had an OTI in him. there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. To, to that conversation, you don't need to weigh in, but, like, I've always thought football players had it harder from fans because fans would be like, you screwed my fantasy team. Like, that was a conversation for a long time. Black people don't watch fantasy football. No, we don't. I would say black people no, play fantasy football. No, I don't. Football. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I'm not going to, like, I'm just ask saying, a black person yeah, right now. But, hey, there's one. There's, there's two. You, Shane you plays play fantasy it? football. Oh, you play it? <laughs> okay, hold on. You, I do want to play the game Kenny, with you, you white you, people. You play it? I don't play fantasy football. Yeah, but you don't represent all. Uh, actually. <laughs> um, what do you mean I don't represent all the people? <laughs> but now I feel like NBA players, because NBA fantasy is not a thing. I mean, it's a thing, but it's not nearly as famous. But now with prop betting, NBA players are like, all I'm hearing about is my props, my props. At, is it ta- like are you guys getting inundated with it now? Is it frustrating? Is it annoying? Like I mean, in our culture, like if a guy were to vent about that, we'd give him a sensitive fine. We'd be like, dude, stop being so sensitive. Yeah, like, yeah, welcome yeah. to life in professional sports. So, I mean, I think it's good for the league to have fans that invested. But yeah, like for a while, my one of my accounts, Venmo account or something, was people could see what my account was, and so I was getting messages after every game, like, "You owe me money. I hate you. I made this bet. You wow. didn't deliver." So. Uh, no, my team security guy was like, you know, you can make that private. And I was like, oh, okay, there we go. So, uh, uh, 
you know, you so just you get you just like two hundred requests for two hundred dollars for rooting oh, yeah, by parlay. all the time, all the time. Like you screwed me. So uh, even if we played well, maybe they bet against me playing well. So if I play well, I get a message. You know, you you, you cost me money. Shaq has trained me to not listen to the Earthlings, to not listen to people on social media, right. and it's helped yeah. me with my life. And I appreciate you big time for that. I don't How think did, you can break him. What I'm learning in the oh, last like twenty minutes is like whether it's Scott Skiles when he's a rookie. Whether it's Lenny Wilkins in '96, no, I'm like, so mad about that. You're, you're not really, that. you're not really going to break him. So, how did you mentally toughen yourself to be able to focus and not listen to anybody? Oh man, I, I don't know. I think failing probably helps when you learn that, like, okay, I have failed, and you know, it's not helping to to sulk or to be a victim, and so you just got to get back on the horse, pick yourself up. But uh, I mean. This this professional sports thing, it'll teach you grit. I mean, it'll teach you resiliency, man. It'll test you. This game will test you. So mm -hmm. you kind of know that. You know what you're signing up for. And there's a part of you that almost, like, likes it, where you get hit and you get a little blood in your mouth and you're like, okay, let's go. Like, this is why I'm here. This is what I do. Um, and that, part of that that's fun. And, like, a part of that I want my boys to have as I raise them. Like, no, I, I like – I don't care so much about, like, how fast you run or how high you jump or – I care about like how hard you work, how gritty you are, how tough you are. Do you get yourself back up? Like that's the what I want to see my boys do more than just be great athletes. That was great, Kirk. That was good. <laughs> that was really good. Can you and your wife just try my method of buying houses? I, yes, if you'd be my real estate agent. All you gotta do is just let's do a joint so, venture, JV. Let's do it. <laughs> let's so do a you, joint venture. so you, it's you, your wife, and the two babies. Yep, two kids, six year old and five year old. So the family's here. So you probably need five bedrooms. I think that's good math. Gated, get, gated community or not Pretty gated? Preferable. Okay, gated community. 7,000 square feet? That's plenty. Okay, so. Okay. A lot of options. Like, I just like I just bought a house in Dallas last week. Okay. And I didn't go see Saw it. Saw it on Instagram. Yeah, it's nice. Wait, it for cool. real? Yeah. We're just built so different. Yeah. I love it. No, it's nice. I love it. I feel like opposites attract you know, a little bit I here. I think so, too. No, 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 but you know what made me really like the house? It was built in 2023. Yeah, yeah. I feel like him as a real estate agent would be fascinating. Built, like, he would send his house. clients pictures on Instagram and be like, you should buy this. And they'd be like, well, we'd like to see it. And he's like, oh, no, I'm out. Like, yeah. I'm not your agent. You have five though. minutes. No, because you know it's crazy? Because I went to Dallas, and I went to do something I never do. I went to look at a house. And this house was built, and it was on the lake. And I called the guy and said, what's this house? He said, hey, the house is built in the lake, but you don't want it. I'm like, that. Bro, this is so <laughs> ghetto. It was a ghetto. Like, I had to drive through. And then the house was in the back of the ghetto. I was like, I, I was so pissed. So then I'm, I'm looking, and I saw one. I said, hey, can we get in this house? He's like, no, we can't get in this house. I don't want to make an offer on it. But this house is, the new one I bought is perfect. We'll do an episode there. Are yeah. you going to build a Shahuka Studios there, too? It's already in there. Do you have yeah. any chance at blending in? Ever? Mm, good question. All the time. Like when you drive through that neighborhood looking at a house. All the time. Can you blend in? Because I do regular stuff. So like I have I have one fancy car, but most of my cars are F one fifties and uh -huh. Chargers. I'm not a liar. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know. I've seen you have you have yeah, like a regular. Batman mobile out there that looks like it like, handles regular. the apocalypse. But are you just when not. you pull in when you pull into a drive through do you just say every time? Yeah, well, do you they, give a fake name? Every no. single time it's going to no. be oh come look who it is look who it is every single yeah, every time. time yeah every time I mean that's just the, what you signed up for yeah every time that's life so I that's your normal I, I didn't understand the question but now that I understand the question yeah <laughs> he's like, not I like he to think I do regular in. people stuff like I just no I'm just you know he's not saying you, yeah no like you're going to go out but you're going to try to blend in but you physically can't is that fair no never. Yeah, never. So you have to plan your days around, like, how are we getting there? Am I walking? Because if I'm walking, I'm in trouble. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you caught me. Let's go to Dr. O'Neill fan advice. If you'd like to ask a question to Dr. O'Neill and our special guest today, Dr. Kirk Cousins, just send an email to askdroneal at gmail.com or leave it in the comments section. This is entertainment only if you use the advice and it doesn't work out for you. I'm sorry. Donnie M. from Denver asks, Dr. O'Neill and Dr. Cousins, I overheard my wife telling a friend that she goes to lunch with her, quote, work husband. When I asked her about it, she told me she was just joking. Should I believe her or should I look into it? Have you guys heard of the phrase I, work husband? I've never heard of it, and I hate that term. 
You already hate it. I already hate that. So in work culture, everyone's a work family and everyone hangs uh, out. And then there's always this guy and this girl. And it's like, oh, that's my work can husband. Can I say that at the Or Falcons. work wife. I don't yeah, like think, if you guys had- I don't if, think the shoe on the other foot works. So what would happen if you came home and you said, my work wife, excuse Not me, good. one of the trainers yeah, has been helping that's me- that's a problem with a capital P. How would she react? She'd be disappointed. Very. That's it? How about- Is she making you sleep on the couch? You're already in your parents' basement. I so. mean, my wife is awesome. She's a saint. But yeah, that would probably set her off a little bit. Now, if she came home and she said, my work husband- you know, or yeah, I wouldn't love that. I'd be like, you better divorce him, <laughs> divorce your work husband now. Or like, like my my Starbucks boyfriend. What? Oh, the guy that takes my order at Starbucks. He's kind of like my Starbucks boyfriend. Would you go down and check on it? I mean, I'd have some questions, and yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably bop. I'd, I'd look, chart Facebook stalking him. Mm. Yeah, I want the big Aristotle to weigh in on yeah. this one. So, so your wife says. Oh, let's just answer Donnie. Donnie's wife. Donnie, I'm sorry. Friend goes to lunch with her work husband. So I overhear my wife Donnie saying- Donnie not invited? Yeah. So I went to work with my work husband. How would you react if you heard this? You're so conflicted right now. No, because I have an answer, but it, it may not work in today's society. That's okay. That's why we're here. No, because I was getting ready to say, obviously, Donnie don't have no discipline in his house. <laughs> see, see, see. <laughs> safe space. See, safe already space. see, already knew. So you're just saying that a woman's. I get it. So beyond that, forget how they'll react. What do you think? You're not supposed to play those games when you're married, unless you have that type of relationship. You've talked about it ahead of time. No, if you have the relationship where you know, like, there's a lot of games being played. Yeah, like I always tell people, you need to know me. You're going to see a lot of stuff, but you need to know me. Like, I saw Shaq. That's good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I saw Shaq at this person. You need to know, does Shaq really do that? Like, you need to know. So if you know your wife is a jokester and you're a jokester, I guess it's okay. But that wouldn't fly in my house because it's discipline in my house. Because women only do two things in my house, make beds and cook food. So I'm just playing. <laughs> That was a joke. <laughs> would you would you go down to work? That was a joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> would you want to meet the guy? No. It, it, like I, if you got invited it, to the Christmas party, and come it's by the office, and you got introduced, it's like, oh, this is my work husband, John. You bringing him in real close? I've seen a lot of situations where work host husbands, where those situations get crossed over. So, no, oh. it's not, yeah. So it's not really a game you should play. You've seen that. Well, not seen in real life, but I've, like, you know, yeah. read stories. Like, you ever hear guys say she's only the secretary? How many secretaries have turned into to wives because of, you know, <laughs> the secretary treats you better than the wife treats you? So I, I would, yeah, I wouldn't play those games. Like, I wouldn't have that. So, problem. what would you tell Donnie, Dr. O'Neill? Better call Dr. Phil because I can't help you out on this one. You would tell him you need to cut it off. Yeah, yeah, you need to cut it off. You're much nicer than I am, Kurt. I'd be disappointed. No, I ain't gonna be, I'd be like, what? He used a different D word. Yeah, discipline. yeah, did. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'd deck him in the head. Yeah. Uh, I want to say, as someone that is this yours, by the way? No, I was just obviously admiring someone who wears size 22. If you wanted, you can have it. I would love that. You got two boys, right? Want me to sign one of these? But you that got the be, other one in there that somewhere? That would be tremendous. You got to find it. I want to say, uh, Thank you having, for coming. Having covered you for this amount of time, yeah. to see how excellent your game has gotten, I thought what you what you and your coach figured out in Minnesota was like the, your perfect flow. Yeah, no doubt. To see you guys have so many games of like three fifty and three, like yeah. you 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 settled into your bag. No, Kevin was awesome, and uh, that's why I was so bittersweet to leave. Was yeah, I knew what I was leaving was tough to leave. Justin Jefferson and oh. great teammates and. I'll let you. But just go. go Tigers. But I just really want to say, like, congrats to you, man, because it's you. it's been a hell of a journey. It's I been fun to watch, that. and thank you. And you're one of the good dudes, man. Yes, you are. You're uh, I, great, uh, man. I did that draft deal with you last year. That's right. He actually was in Atlanta when I was filming it with you, and uh, uh, that was impressive. Just like the draft is long, and you had to host that thing for hours, and I was sitting there. They were just kicking it to me on occasion. Yes. And I was sitting there like, this guy in Parsons, they got to just go. Oh, bro. It was impressive. I just, I just did college basketball, and it, yeah, I saw was, you at the desk. it was 
back to back 18 hour days. It's no joke. And I yeah, mean, you almost hit Kurt in the back of his head, gave him a concussion. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, man, the NFL draft prepared me for March Madness. Just being on sure. for, for sure. that long. And react accordingly. Shaq doesn't give a about any of this, but Kirk, I love you. You watch Congrats. March Madness? No, not at all, sir. That's what I'm not working on. How much do you follow LSU these days? Well, the boys suck, so I'm not following them, but I'm definitely following the girls. I, actually, women's basketball is kicking. Yeah. Like, it's sure. really, it's, it, it's kicking. Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, Juju. Dom, dominate, like, it was kind of like epiphany. Like, last week was the first time I watched all girls' games. Like, I've never done it before, ever, but last week. She's getting better, yeah. Oh, it was crazy. Uh, Juju Watkins, yeah. Caitlin, my girl, Angel Reed, like they're just killing. Like I, the entire I don't know, South Carolina team and Don Staley. I don't think I even know any any, any men's any. Do you go back to Baton Rouge much? Yeah, Did one you check in one football game every year. And you were there for two years? Three. Really? Yeah, See, in today's place. world, you'd have been there for one or nothing. I probably would. I probably would have stayed for three. Really? You enjoyed it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I had a I had a debate. Actually, last time I was at LSU, I actually I, I actually taught a class. And my perspective. Your undergrads from LSU is your master's from there too? No, I got my master's from University of Phoenix. Yeah. But I, I taught a class on, on marketing, and a, a kid asked me about the NIL. And I always said, for me, college was about higher education. Like a lot of kids take the money. But like you I, took school seriously. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And, I would, and I would never short myself. So if Nike is going to come to me with a shoe deal, I want, I want the money I'm going to get as a pro. So if you're not talking 50 million for 10 years, like I'm not going to take the, 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 the 500,000. The watered down. Yeah, no, I'm first. not going to. Yeah, I mean, so like if you're interested in me now and you think I'm going to be this guy, pay me for being that guy right now. Like, you know, when, because when you come out of college and, and, and they're offering contracts, they're offering you contracts as if you're that guy. So I would, I probably, I probably wouldn't even take an IL money. Like my son called me one day and say, uh, "I saw your son on the Axe Body Spray commercial." Which one? I think it's Sharif. Dang, he didn't tell me about that one. He got a, he got an NIL bag. Yeah, but no, but he, but no, no, but he yeah, called it's me. It's on almost as much as your Home Depot commercial. <laughs> He's catching <laughs> that up. That is on a lot. Mm -hmm. I no, but he called me about it. He called me about a shoe deal, and I said, "My man, you, do you know what nepotism is?" He said, "I said." I got my own shoe brand, and, and I'm part owner of the other one. You can take the little money, or you can help me run run it. So now he's now you know helping me run it. But you know what nepotism? Yeah. Is. No, I told him. I said, bro, do you understand what nepotism mean? Like that Nike, they want to pay you certain. That's cool, but I own a company, and we and your father trying to give you some nepotism. Yeah, yeah here. like you know, like I'm doing very well. So I don't think I would take the like I would take certain deals like you know. when you were being line. recruited. Who else like where would you have gone if LSU had fallen through? So I went to North Carolina. I didn't like Dean Smith. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't like Rick Fox. He was still playing there. Yeah, I mean, he was just, just and you couldn't tell Dean Smith to cut him like you did. At the no, post. I couldn't. I didn't like Shaq Rick Fox. Doesn't like pretty guys because yeah. he thinks they're gonna get everybody. Yeah, so they, then he and did. Shaq's very competitive. Was no, that an accurate? No, because this is what happened. He took See. me. To, no, he took me to one of those parties. I'm like. And all the girls went to him, and I was like, "Yeah, the Vanessa Jerry Williams." Girls. Yeah, yeah. So then I went to NC State. Like Rick, so Rick Fox cost North Carolina yeah. a lot. A, and, three and, years of yeah. Dean Smith would have three more titles. A, <laughs> then, <laughs> Too pretty, Rick. Then I went to NC State, and what I took from NC Wolf State pack. was it was a guy. His name was Charles Shackelford. He was the original Shack. So after I you saw him, the and, name. no, no, but after I saw him and watched him, then I went back to San Antonio and I was Shaq. Had the knee pads, I had the bowl cut. I didn't want to go there because it was already there. The bowl cut. <laughs> then I went to Illinois with Nick Anderson. It was just too cold there. And you then ended up I being a teammate to, with yeah, Orlando. In Orlando. But you actually visited Champagne and considered it. I did, yeah. It just wasn't going to work. And then I went to Notre Dame, I think. You took every visit. Like, yeah, I took every visit. And I was like, no. Nah. Then I went to LSU and. Sad enough for no Duke. Section. Coach K couldn't get you nah, interested. I'm not that smart. Get him to Duke. But Did you I, have like some he got game moments? Yes. Yeah, so, well, not oh. personal. No. The eyebrows gave it away no, on that one. Not, Statue of limitations. Not personal, but who, let me tell you something. Who, who, whoever set this trip up, did, trip up did a great job. So we had the football guy and I'm just sitting. I'm sitting in the studio. What campus are we yeah, at? LSU. Okay. And I'm shy. So when I first got there, I'm not looking around. So then I'm just sitting there and he's like, Baton Rouge, if you want this guy, Shaquille O'Neal, to come to LSU. Uh -huh. And they put the spotlight in my section. I was like that. And I turned around. I was like, oh, my God. There were so many supermodels sitting in my section. They set me up. And I didn't know. He loves like, being an alpha. Yeah, and I was like. He loves being an yeah. alpha. And then one girl was like. And she did like that. 
And I was like, if only Coach K knew what yeah, it would have taken. Sign right? the paper. Yeah, and Illinois, Illinois like, could have had him. I was like, me and <laughs> and I was 16 going to seven because I went to LSU and I was 17. I was 17 when I went to LSU. Oh, like your first year? Yes, I was 17. 17 year old freshman. Did I couldn't Kenny go to come clubs. And visit? Huh? Did Kenny come and visit? No, he didn't. No, no, I didn't. No, he was no, a no, child. No, no, he I, was a child. I didn't. I didn't do anything. I didn't do nothing. I find that girl who licked her lips. Yeah, no, she was like, <laughs> she looked at us. B. <laughs> All right, we gotta go because we don't want to get Kirk in trouble. Kirk, you're the man, bro. Thank you, bro. Thanks, Thanks for coming, coming out here. Having us Welcome out, man. back to Atlanta, yeah. brother. And Appreciate try cool here, man. and just I, I'm not saying bye, but just just look, and you might see something you like. Yeah, just and just maybe just be willing to take a risk. <laughs> yep. We'll do a house tour when Kirk buys a house for the podcast. I. You know, you know it's crazy. I bought seven houses and I only and I only fell once. You only fell once. Failed. Oh, like Your this hit house, rate is high. He's got yeah, my hit rate, rate high. Like the house next door, I didn't even look at it. You just bought it. Yeah, and now I got to put the same amount of money to pay for it to make it looks good. Sounds like you did a great job. Yeah, but uh, I, I mean, but that was only in the you know that one, of course, is, is under a million. But I just wanted wanted to land. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, right, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah. So yeah, I'm in my in-law's basement until we find a place. It take you that long to find a house, bro?